Lord, we need your presence. We need you to fill us. We cannot live without you, Lord. Say you're the living water. You're my comforter, my worship him. Bow down and worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Oh, worship him. Oh, worship him. Bow down and worship. Bow down and worship. Worship him. 
presence this morning. We need you to fill this room. Consume.
to your love. Keep me by your side. Spirit, Spirit. Spirit. a God who has our back this morning. Whatever the situation is, hallelujah. 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 He's asking us to give it to him. Hallelujah. God is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. hallelujah. You're worthy, hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. You are worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, just worship hallelujah. him. Hallelujah. Worship him this morning. 
You have a reason to worship him this morning. You have a reason to praise him this morning. Hallelujah. Just because he is God, he deserves our worship. Hallelujah. It's not even about the things that he has done, but because he is God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What do you think about Jesus this morning? What do you think about Jesus? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What do you think about Jesus? He's all right. What do you think about Jesus? He's all right. What do you think? What you think about Jesus? He's alright. He's alright. He's alright. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I know I really trouble nobody, you know, but I see some person sitting at the back. So you see, those of us who know that Jesus is all right, we need to reassure them this morning, all right? Hallelujah. They're sitting and looking. Hallelujah. Yes. What you think about Jesus? He's all right. What you think about Jesus? Jesus in the evening, every, every minute of the day.
all little children man woman picking me everyone and we are gonna call upon Jesus three times hallelujah one Jesus two Scripture. Our scripture reading. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Hallelujah. Turn your Bibles with me. To Acts chapter 17. Verse 24, Acts chapter 17, and we're going to read from chapter 24, verse 24, sorry. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in the temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. He had made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth and had determined the ends, the times before appointed and the bounties of their habitation that they could seek the Lord if happily they might feel after him and find him though he not Though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As certain of your own poet have said. For we are also his offspring. For as much they as we are the offspring of God. We ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stole graven by heart and men's device. And the times of this ignorance God wrinkled at, and, sorry, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, because he at appointed a day in the, in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men in that he hath raised him from the dead. And when they heard of this resurrection of the dead, some mocked and others said, We will hear thee again of this matter. So Paul departed from among them. 34. Here be it. Certain men crave unto him and believe, among which we, Diomosius, and a Areopagite and a woman named Demaris and others with them. Here ended a portion of God's holy word. We honor it by saying thanks be to God. And we're going to sing this morning, nothing but the blood. Bless the Lord. I'll ask Sister Rosie to help me. And washed away my sin, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can be behold again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus.
I'm going to invite you to stand again. Hallelujah. And we're going to welcome the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit with a shout. We're going to shout hallelujah on each name. Welcome the Father. Welcome the Son. Welcome the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He is worthy to be praised and adored. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We then want to acknowledge our pastor and his lovely wife. So that's Pastor Jackson and Sister Melissa Jackson. Hallelujah. Next, we want to acknowledge the other leaders of the church. The men's president, the ladies' president, the youth president, the praise and worship director, the secretary, the treasurer, the evangelism team. Well, well, I'm just acknowledging you in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. We are grateful to have you every week just helping us to navigate our way through each day. Hallelujah. Now, just acknowledging the rest of the congregation, we appreciate you as well. Let us give the congregation a round of applause. So today we have, uh, we have a few visitors. It's not very few, and it's good to have so many visitors today. And as I call your name, you can stand and uh, probably wave, or you can sit and wave, uh, but we'd like to see who we are acknowledging, right? So we'd like to welcome Nikel. All right. <laughs> welcome Nicholas Williams. Bless you, sir. Welcome Simone Dennis. Bless you, ma'am. And Christopher Dennis. Then we'd like to also welcome Arlene Samuels Brown. Nicola Granston. Javon Carnwall. Bernardo Anderson, Kimani Williams, and Kelly Lee, sorry, Kelly Lee Sterling. Hallelujah. We are so happy to have you in our midst today, and we are hoping to see you again. All right? So as we go through the rest of this day, do not let the blessing that is overflowing pass you by, but ensure that you turn up your cups so that you can receive that which the Lord has for you. God bless you. I'll now respectfully. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm so sorry. So, 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 um, I almost for, for, forgot to, you know, do something so special. You know, it's so good when you can have uh, two people come together and become one. So it's so wonderful. And we're going to acknowledge our newlyweds, our newest couple, Brother Andre and Sister Rochelle. It is a blessing. And you know, we're looking forward to the future things that will, you know, the future blessings that will come your way. Hallelujah. So as we go, and it's not really a welcome, but an acknowledgement because you're already a part of us. So we acknowledge you, we bless you, and may the presence of the Lord dwell in your midst. God bless you. Shall we worship the Lord? Praise the Lord. It's offering time. It's giving time. Hallelujah. Give it with love. Store it above. 
Give it with a willing heart. Give it with love. Store it above. Give it with a willing. And then you give and then you give it with love. Store it above. Give it with a willing heart. Give it with love. Store it above. Give it with a willing heart. Give it with love. Jesus. This time I'll invite Sister Arisa with our intercessory prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We pray and God delivers. We pray.
and say that it's not pleases unto your mighty God. At the end of the day, it's all about what you say, God. It's all about what you require from what me, Lord. So, God, I pray, God, that you just take over this service. God, I pray, God, that you lead and direct. Mighty God, lead and direct, God. Father God, as I put the man servant before you, Lord, this morning, God, you know all about him. Lord, I pray, God, that you strengthen him. Oh, God, remember his wife, remember the daughter, God. Remember the rest of the family, God. Mighty God, I pray, God, that you strength, strength like no other. Every plan of the enemy, God, every plan, oh, God, that the enemy is setting up for him, God. We can't sleep.
God, let no weapon that form against them prosper. Every tongue that rise up against them in judgment, we condemn it this morning. Father God, remember the community this morning. Oh God Almighty, the youths them. Oh God that are in the community this morning. The young ladies them, Lord. Mighty God. Bring deliverance, Jesus. Bring deliverance, God. Bring breakthrough, mighty God. We tear down every plan. Oh God, that the enemy set it up. We tear it down and we cancel. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Take over the service. Oh God, take over the rest of the service. Take over, mighty God. Lord Jesus, the musician them this morning. Oh God, I put them before you. Lord God, you place them here, God. Oh God Almighty. Lord, and I pray, God, that no demons, hey, no demons are hell. From hell, we'll have the dominion over them this morning. No demons, hey, no demons, my daughter, my daughter, my daughter, no demons from hell. We'll have the dominion over them this morning, God. Strength them, God, provide for them and open up doors for them, mighty God. As we leave the rest of the service into your hands, tell our thanks in the precious name. Shall we worship the Lord? Praise the Lord. Magnify the name of Jesus. Exalt the King of Kings. Exalt the Lord of Lords. Exalt the conquering land of the tribe of Judah. Exalt our provider. Exalt our healer. Exalt our waymaker. Exalt our miracle worker. Hallelujah. 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 At this time, we'll have a selection by the choir. Hallelujah. Part of the choir. Hallelujah. 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 Shall we bless the Lord? Hallelujah. Shall we bless the Lord? Hallelujah. Shall we bless the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some trust in chariots. Some trust in horses. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some trust in scamming. Hallelujah. But we will remember the name of our God. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Trust in chariots, some trust in horses.
Just show the praise unto the Lord. Yes, there are some who trust in their own means. Some in horses, some in chariots. But today we will remember the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It is God in whom we trust. It is God in whom we depend. On whom we depend. And we lift him up and we adore him today. Hallelujah. Today... You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. I must greet the, acknowledge the presence of God that is here with us today. I must greet all the officers and leaders of the church and all those who are visiting with us. I must give God thanks for his many benefits. Hallelujah. I must give God thanks for all his benefits. Because if it wasn't for God, where would I be? Look at your neighbor and say, where would you be? If it wasn't uh, for the Lord, where would you be? Hallelujah. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, many accidents would have befallen me. Hallelujah. Many problems would have overcome me. Hallelujah. And just in case you feel that, that when you see a minister, there are angels. Many situations that come upon me would befall me. But it's because of the Lord I am here today. As a young man, I can stand. Amen. As a young man, I can still stand for the Lord. Hallelujah. So today... I am happy to be in the presence of the Lord and among the people of God. The songman says, I love the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. And uh, being here, it's, a, it's deemed a sincere privilege. Amen? Hallelujah. Today, as we've gone through, I trust that you have been blessed as, as you've come this far in the service, blessed by the singing and the worship and by the scripture reading. As we are going to go into the word, I trust that your hearts will be further blessed. Today, as I stand here, I just want to stir your pure minds as we look into the word to see what the Lord would have to say to us. Amen, everybody. Hallelujah. At this time, as we get into the word, I want you to turn your Bibles with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. And we'll be reading some verses there. When you find it, please stand with me. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. And if you have no Bible, you can stand and read. It will be projected on those screens. Okay, I'll read while you follow. Verse 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 5. If you're a little child, you stand also as we reverence the reading of God's holy words. But if any have caused grief, he hath not grieved me, but in part, that I may not overcharge you all. 
sufficient to such a man is this punishment which was inflicted of many, so that contrarywise you ought rather to forgive him and comfort him, lest perhaps such a one should be swallowed up with over much sorrow. Wherefore, I beseech you that you would confirm your love towards him. For to this end also did I write that I might know the proof of you, whether ye be obedient in all things. To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgive anything, to whom I forgive it, for your sakes forgive it in the person of Christ. I forgive it in the person of Christ. Lest Satan should get an advantage over us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. Amen. I want to read verse 11 again. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I also, well, earlier I looked over those persons who may be joining us online. I want to say greetings to, I don't want to start to call names, to uh, the Dennises and to Christina and to all of Sister Rose um, family members and those who are well-wishers who have joined us today. We say greetings and convey the welcome that um, was done earlier. God bless you. And it is good to have you. And my darling wife, Melissa, why are you folding her arms? Because I didn't, didn't say anything, but God be thanked for her. Amen? Hallelujah. Today I want to share with you on the topic. It's kind of a long phrase. Do not be ignorant of the devil's devices. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't be ignorant of the tricks of the devil. Uh, look at another neighbor and say, neighbor, be wise in, about how the devil operates. Amen. So in Paul's letters to the Corinthian brethren, uh, we see that there's an amazing trend. Amen, everybody? Yes, is letters, two letters, first and second Corinthians. We see him writing to a church that would have the gifts of the spirit being operational in them. We see him talking about speaking in tongues. We see him talking about prophecy and all of these gifts. Yet still, we see that Paul have to be often correcting these people on how to live a proper life, how to operate in church. Don't get up and cause confusion in church saying that you are prophesying. And we see that Paul was guiding these people well. There was a particular situation as dealt with in this text. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, where a young man was taking his father's wife. And according to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, he was puffed up about it. He would not take correction about it. And we see also that uh, there were persons who were taking it lightly what the man was doing. And so Paul had to say that uh, it, uh, it is often reported that there is fornication among you, sexual immorality among you, that which is not even reported among the Gentiles. That's how Paul had to address them. And then he spoke about this man. He said, uh, you should put away this man from among you. Anybody believe said that harsh and hard? These days, if you discipline a church member, you hear about the judgmental attitude and, and, and you hear how the church is wicked. But Paul was saying, you cannot keep company with such a person. You talk to him over and over and he's not hearing. Put him away from you and deliver him to the devil. Paul used the very words. Deliver him to who? So Paul was saying that since the church cannot discipline him, the devil who have led him to do this wicked thing, 
let him go to the devil and the devil him want go to. And then he will see what the devil is made of. Because the devil will push him and maybe push him as far as the spear. The devil is no easy for you, know, brethren. And this is why maybe the Lord dropped this theme in my mind uh, today. And so we're going to see what we can find in this. We see that uh, with Paul telling them to put this person away from themselves and deliver him to the devil. This scripture is pointing to us that church discipline exists. Anybody hear that? Church discipline exists. We don't come here and do anything we want to do, how we want to do it, when we want to do it. Do whatever we want to do. Go wherever we want to do. No, church discipline do what? It exists. And we ought to pay attention to church discipline. We are a community of, this, of believers. And if there is a community, there must be rules that govern that community. And when rules are broken, what usually happens? There is discipline. I don't want to call it punishment because what the church does is not to cause any harm or pain, but to cause restoration in the end. Amen, everybody? Yes, this thing that Paul, uh, this church discipline that Paul alluded to here, it is a bit hard to dish out. It is hard to give because as a pastor, when I must talk to a brother or a sister about anything, there is much pain in my heart at first. Because what I want to do is to bring this person to the light. Is to bring this person to a place where they can see what is wrong and make correction. The purpose of church discipline is to cause restoration. Some of us who grew up in the old days, um, mommy used to talk to us. And, well, for me, I'd rather daddy beat me than mommy talk to me. Yes, man. The beating easier to deal with. But no say, I become a foolishness. Because if I tell you, you know, how much time I tell you? Say, don't do that. And he walk me up. A couple of seconds, I do that for feel like an eternity. But when it finish, it finish. No, mommy go talk to you and the whole week. You hear it in your head. Oh, if you make mommy talk to me about that. It better that it beat me. I remember a particular instance that I did something. Daddy used to take me to school. And I think what I did was, I was being a bit rude. I did a couple of things. I spit through the car window while the window was driving. You know, that can be disgusting. And another time, I was playing this game named Inches. And said, me a Christian boy. Well, the young ones don't know that game. Thanks be to God. The older ones, you know it. The ones about my age, you know it. Yes, and guess what daddy do? Daddy tell mommy. The worst thing he could have ever do. And mommy don't beat me, mommy talk to me. I said, daddy, you see me, I do that. We never just deal with it. Don't tell mommy, for. Don't tell mommy that there's something there. Mommy, if you see me like, you know, the perfect youth. You, you, you know it is. However, however, the discipline was necessary. But church discipline, as I was saying, it is Often hard to dish out because you have to be balanced. You have to be serious enough. Anybody hear that? And you have to be loving enough. Because if when you are putting out this church discipline, you go to any side too much. Say, I am too hard on the rough side. Guess what's going to happen? The person can be pushed to despair and go out there and feel like, oh my God, what did I do? I can't come back now. And the devil is going to just grab them and, and, and put all sorts of things in their head. And if I go to the leniency side too much, then those persons are going to continue with their error. Anybody get that? So Paul was exhorting the believers in 2 Corinthians chapter 2. He was saying, yes, the man did what he did. And yes, you had to put him out of the church. You had to excommunicate him. I'll tell you that these days, I, one of the things I was thinking about, sometimes these days with baby, baby, the members, them, you know. Paul wasn't running no, no member. But he wanted the members to be disciplined. These days, these days we, we, we sometimes are a bit too calm and too soft. And maybe that's for me. 
Because I am, I, am I am a nice guy. You know them nice guys? That's me. Yes. But sometimes we have to deal with the situation as it ought to be deal, dealt with. It has, there has to be a balance. And though it is hard to find that balance, with some guidance from the Lord, we can find that balance. Hallelujah. And, and so that's the background to this scripture. However, the thing that I want to look at is that we should not be ignorant of the devices of the devil. The devices of the devil, they are looked at as the wiles of the devil, the schemes of the devil, the strategies that the devil take on. It is the way the devil attacks the believer. It is the way that the devil creeps up on us. He does not always jump down on us like a big animal. Sometimes he creeps up on us. Anybody get that? Sometimes a little pride here and there. Sometimes a, a, a little lying here and there. Sometimes a little fear here and there. A little dishonesty here and there. And he creeps upon us. Uh, even in the, the instance where we talk about church discipline. A little misjudgment here and there. A little lack of wisdom here and there. And he creeps up on the believer. He creeps up on the church. And he creeps up on the, 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 the minister of the Lord. So today... I am exhorting you with this from my heart. Do not be ignorant of the devices. Do not be ignorant of the way he attacks you. For the cinnamon, he, uh, he, he just makes you comfortable. Yes, man. I can live. What's the talk these days? May I live my life. Yes, may I live my life. And the cinnamon is comfortable. And, 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 and because God bestows some blessing, he said, that's the mean, that's it, I'm get the blessing. I'm going to just stay. This is how the devil operates. So just a few points about the devices of the devil. They are many and varied. They are many devices. So don't think he's going to come to you one way. So the devil, the devil might pounce upon you and as, as a young woman with a cute boy and and it, and it don't work. You think he will come back the same way next time? No, he might have enough ways to get to you. He knows, he knows, all right, she don't love man so much. So, I go make sure get some sticky fingers. Oh, she look, look like she love money. I go present some money when I fear in front of her. Hear what? She works with money. I go make, she just take out a little bit. It's not noticeable. Anybody see what happened to it, to, to that 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 staff of it was it NCB? She take out a little bit, a little bit, a little bit until when it is recorded, it is what millions. But because when you're taking it out, it's not noticeable. This is what happens to us. The devil don't just come down on us one time, and in one way, Hallelujah. And so you you're building it up, building it up until when it hit you. My Jesus, there is no way out anymore. You get trapped. But today, bear in mind that he has many tricks. The scripture says that we use the shield of faith to quench the fiery darts of the enemy. Hallelujah. Sometimes it's nothing to make you comfortable. Sometimes it is something that causes you pain. Sometimes it is something that causes you hurt. Sometimes it is sickness. Sometimes it is lack. Sometimes it is persecution from all angles. Sometimes it just seems, I don't know what I'm going on. You know, nothing will work out for me. That's how he pounces upon you. It's it rough, don't it? Sometimes it is discipline. He realizes that, okay, him not disciplined, she not disciplined. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to just make all sorts of stuff today. And him just make you round in a circles. Going round like the, 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 the children of Israel walking around in the wilderness. When they could have ended their journey so quickly. The devil's devices, they are many. Not the, the, the Bible tells us that the devil goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may, be, may devour. Yes, that's how he operates. 
the, dev, the Bible tells us that the devil is the accuser of the brethren. The Bible tells us that, 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 that he has many agents that will issue out his many devices and schemes. The principalities and powers, rulers of darkness, of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. So everything not straightforward when you come on to the devil's attacks. Anybody get that? Yes, man. And everything straightforward. Hallelujah. Now, don't think that he's going to just come as a layman. He's tactically trained. And any minister, any agent that the devil is sending out is tactically cheer, trained. The terminology, right, Roger? Yeah, man. A, a war may talk about. You know about them things. <laughs> Tactically trained. And so when, when, when the enemy pounces upon you, it is nothing that you can so easily brush off. The last time I preached about, about uh, these type of things, I was saying that in order to overcome the devil, we must have supernatural coverage. We must have a supernatural armor, which is the armor of God. Yes, we're not fighting against no abnormal force. We are fighting against a diabolical and powerful spiritual force. It is also a supernatural force that we are fighting against. That's, that's why God had to have Paul write that though we fight against these things, the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Yes. They are mighty through who? Through Jackson. No, man. Jackson weak like rat. Through, through, through Jacobs. No. Through, through Walters. No. No, man. Mighty through God. So one, look out. He's coming from many angles. Many different ways. He's coming. Hallelujah. And they are cunning and they are crafty. When a lion is attacking a group of animals, whether a herd of wild, wild boars or a herd of wild cattle, um, him not running at them, you know? Anybody know that? He can't run at them. One of the big bull are going to just carn him. So you know what he does? He stays afar off. And he roars. And when he roars, it echoes in the jungle. And you find these animals, they get confused. And they begin to run to the left and to the right. They begin to run to the back and to the front. And then he just, the, the lion just runs to the side. And grab one of the little ones. Grab one of, one, one who you would have think is strong also because he's confused. Grab one of those that, that looks like much meat and good meat. And not long after, he strangles that one animal standing alone to death. And you hear that? That one animal standing alone to death. But he cannot attack while you are together. So this is where he employs his skills. Amen? Skillful. And crafty. If, if he's sending fiery darts, he's not sending them one way. He's not just going to send them in a line like this. He knows how to put them in circles. He knows how to put them in zigzag. And, and, and he knows how to reach you. So maybe he knows, he knows that certain trouble now going to face you. But he knows that something else is going to trouble you. He's going to attack you. In that manner. Now, along with them being many and varied and skillful and crafty, these are the methods by which he ensnares the believer. This is how he ensnares an unsaved man um, by his cunning and crafty um, attacks, by, by his many and varying attacks. This is how he ensnares you. Hallelujah. Now, if he cannot deal with you physically, 
because uh, sometimes the enemy is going to come upon you um, physically, but there are times when that won't work and it will begin to work on your mind. It will begin to work on your mind. And he's, he'll begin to fight you. Your mind is a battlefield. Anybody understand that? Yes, man. And he begins to tug at your feet. Tug at your feet. And questions will come. And you'll see some material in some areas talking against God that you've never seen before. Anybody ever go up on YouTube yet? Anybody see the shorts that are going around now? The short videos and, 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 and the TikTok videos. You see them more than you see the videos that are affirming God. You see some videos that are saying, I see one video, one man come up and say, Christianity disproved in 30 seconds. And his premise is that um, Jesus was not a Christian. So he was highly, whatever is coming off, you know that it's eerie already from him start there. So. And he dif disproved himself. In 30 seconds. But I know there will be persons under that will be saying, yes, it's true. Anybody ever watch the comments thread? Yes. And we, we, we believe in clapping our hands and stomping our feet. And we believe in singing aloud and dancing. And then you will see somebody um, pop up that, why you should not clap your hands in church? Why dancing is wrong in church? Why music should not be played in church? Every now and again, I love, the, love, love when, when the organ is behind me when I'm preaching. Why no music should be prayed, played when the preacher is preaching? And everything that you can think of to cause distraction, the devil uses it to ensnare the believer. We have to open our eyes. Amen, everybody. Yes, man, we have to open our eyes. Is, is, there, is there a way to overcome all of this? Is there a way to go over this? Is this there a way to, to, to win the devil? The scriptures tell us that we should submit to God. That we should resist the devil. And he will submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. The scriptures tell us uh, also in 1 Peter 5 verse 8 that we must be what? Sober. Be vigilant because our adversary, the devil, he goeth about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Him we must resist. We have to resist with the word and through much prayer. Uh, in, 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 in the New Testament, in the Gospels, when Jesus was being tempted of the devil, he was in the wilderness and he was fasting for 40 days. And the scripture says, after he had fasted, he was now hungry. First thing, who step up? Your devil, Jesus, weak, you know, so go and step in with the biggest weakness. You're hungry, Jesus. Turn the stone into bread. Jesus... Jesus said, hear what? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Hallelujah. Jesus was not having it. He, uh, 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 sometimes the enemy attack us and we don't know how to go about it, you know. But the, David said that, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Hallelujah. I was talking to God. And so we see that when the enemy comes upon us, we must pull for the word. Draw for the word. The scriptures tell us that the word of God, it is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And we have that as our weapon. So the enemy said, come on, this stone to be made bread. He was throwing on Jesus the lust of the flesh. That's one of his schemes. The lust of the flesh. Everything that the flesh wants. Hallelujah. These days people can't fast anymore. People can't, can't have, have, have good manners anymore. Everybody 
uh, decide that I am going to throw off the things of God because it don't feel right. You hear the flesh? It don't feel right. Hallelujah. Faith does not work anymore. That's what some are saying because when it comes to faith, it takes sacrifice. But Jesus, when the lust of the flesh temptation came upon him, he said that man shall not live by bread alone. And so we see the devil is attacking the word of God like he has never attacked anything before. This is the part of the service when the word is going on that, that, that we dislike the most. When Bible studies come up it is the place that we dislike the most. Hallelujah. When Sunday school is happening it is the place that we do not like because we often say it boring. But when preacher preach, preacher might talk a few things, don't? But in my teaching, just talk. talk the, 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 I will tell anybody, I'd rather you miss the front part of church service and come take the word. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Yes, man. You better, you better you catch the word. Because if you have the word, you'll be able to stand up against the devil. If it's a sinner, man, the, the only way you're going to save is by the word. You could have danced and skipped a little more. The music could have sweet a little more. Church could have nice a little more. Hallelujah. You could have rock and go on a little more. It is the word that will save you. It is the word that will cause the Holy Spirit to convict you. Hallelujah. It is by the word in you that the conviction will come. Hallelujah. So, so, so Jesus stood with the word. And he... he when he said that man shall not live by bread alone. You think that he's the first one who said that? It was in the word. And then the devil said, all right, that's not good enough. Let me tempt him with the pride of life. And the devil carry him to the pinnacle of a, tem of a temple and say, here, Jesus, jump off because it is written. And... He shall give your angels. You hear the devil using the word too? And he, the Bible says of it, you know. Uh, and he shall give his angel charge uh, over you that they may bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone. The Bible said for true, the devil had told Jesus. Quoting the scripture to Jesus. So, so, so Jesus could say, yeah man. Man a big man, we can show you me a big man. That's pride. If me jump off, I am so big that the angel of the Lord themselves will come and catch me. Anybody hear that? Yes. And so when Jesus saw the devil had tried, Jesus, Jesus uh, says, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Jesus was saying, you know who you are talking to? Yeah, you're talking to God himself. Who are you tempting? I know I have a fleshy side, and you see it. I'm hungry. But you're talking to God himself. And it, was, it is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So Jesus is pulling for the word. The devil said, that, that is not enough. The pride of life is not enough. See, him not shake yet. Hallelujah. I, 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 am, I, I am, I'm going to give him Another test with the lust of the eyes. Jesus intrinsically is a leader and a powerful king. He was born prophet, priest, and king. And so, you know, the leader in you want to lead. The devil climbed up on a high mountain and says, Hear what? Look at all of these kingdoms. These will I give to you if you bow down and worship me. Jesus said, get thee hence, Satan. For it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou 
serve. Hallelujah. So when the enemy come upon us in whatever way, whether it's the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life, whatever he raises up in front of us, we should try and follow Jesus' example. Like a masterful tactician, Jesus, he drew the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and he cut down every attack of the enemy, and he limbed them down, limb by limb, and then when he was finished the enemy fled from him and angels consoled him Jesus was not ignorant of the devices of the enemy hallelujah I, I remember uh, there was there was Adam and Eve who were tempted in the same way in particular Eve was tempted with the lust of the flesh the lust of the eye and the pride of life look at the fruit this fruit it looks good to be eaten, the lust of the eye, hallelujah, and, and, and it is good for food, the lust of the flesh, and it is good if you eat it, God know why you eat it, because it are going to make you be like God's, you hear the pride of life, he, he wants, wants you, he does not want you to be like God, so Eve, he fell to the she fell to the test, and she ate, as Eve was not aware of the devices of the enemy, Hallelujah. Uh, there are so many men who in their middle ages, they fall uh, to so many things because at that time, the pride of life and, and, and all of the things that come up, the love for money, lust to come up. Because I tell you, this thing that man grew up, but them here in a group, don't it? Hallelujah. So now wifey have three children and then you see one young catty out there so. Hallelujah. And, 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 and man falls. Hallelujah. To this type of thing. I, I have a little money in the bank, but a situation come upon me. I must be crafty. And I begin to become cunning. And I begin to do this which is against the law. And that which is against the law. And soon I fall. Anybody hear what I'm saying? The devices of the enemy are many and veering. Oh, I called on the Lord and he did not answer me. Same time, I am going to go somewhere else. Oh, Jesus. You know something I never think about nothing like this. Hallelujah. Sometimes it is the, the situations that, that, that bounce upon us. The devil just take them and try to use them against us and try to destroy us. But today we will not be ignorant of the devil. I, 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 I will not be ensnared by the devil. I will not be locked up and cooped up in a cage by the devil. Hallelujah. The enemy knows that he will not get some of us to fall in certain way. So he pushes some bad judgment in our minds. And we begin to do some things that are against principle. And are against the will of God. And it causes us to find ourselves in a place that we are turned upside down. We become confused. We become messed up. We become dysfunctional. And this is all the attack of the enemy. I want to speak to the church today and to everyone sitting in this room that we are not to be ignorant of how the enemy operates. For the Christian, he wants you to feel. He wants you to falter. He wants you to go back into the world. For those who are not saved, he wants you to die in your sins and not come to God. But today we stand up in power. We stand up in the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we will stand defeating the enemy. And in any direction he comes, we will be victorious. Hallelujah. Victory. The trials will come, hallelujah, but we will stand up in the name of Jesus. Sickness will come, but we will stand up in the name of Jesus. Hardships will come, but we will stand up in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, things will hit us and we will overcome. Hallelujah, and another time it hit us again, but we will stand in the name of Jesus.
it may be a long wait, but the scriptures say, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount upon wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. Hallelujah. The enemy, he expects you to faint. He expects you to fall. But every so he mounts you, you rise back up. Every anger he hits you, you rise back up because God is God. All right, him hit you one time because you never see him coming. The next time, remember, he's coming again. He's going to try to hit you, maybe not the same way, but another way. Rise up and be, do not be ignorant of his devices. Hallelujah. Uh, you rise up and submit to God and see how you overcome the devices. I am closing shortly, but anybody know of some toys? Um, the bottom of them is heavy. So if you bounce over the head, it just swing back up. Yes. The scriptures tell us something about believers. They tell us that within us there is something heavy. The scriptures tell us that we have this treasure in earth and vessels. That the excellency of the power may not be of us, but of God. This, this power... Uh, the, this power is brought by the light of the glorious gospel that is within us. And so this, the scriptures tell us that we, we, we are persecuted, but we are not forsaken. We are struck down, but we are not destroyed. Hallelujah. Many attacks. Hallelujah. The scriptures say many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Hallelujah. I want somebody who is being afflicted today to be encouraged. It doesn't matter what angle it is coming from. It doesn't matter if the same angle is being used. The Lord will deliver you out of them all. So we, 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 we have something heavy. So Box it so we get up back. Knock we over so we get up back. Knock us back where we get up back. And the enemy is confused, but we will keep standing. Know this that God is in control. And if God is in control, the enemy cannot win. Look at your neighbor and say, The enemy cannot win. Hallelujah. Look at another neighbor and say, We are fighting a winning battle. Hallelujah. Yes, it doesn't matter what the enemy comes with. We understand that he's coming. It doesn't matter where he's coming from. We understand that he's coming. It doesn't matter how crafty and cunning, how fearing and many. It doesn't matter how ensnaring it is. We will overcome. Amen, everybody. We will overcome. Could we stand at this time? I just want to encourage us again. Let us not be ignorant of the devices, of the strategies, the cunning craftiness of the enemy. The enemy is going to come at you once you want to walk with the Lord. Anybody hear that? Once you want to walk with the Lord, the devil is going to come at you. Going to use your own thoughts, going to use your own perceptions, is going to use your neighbor's thoughts and perceptions, is going to use circumstances and situations, is going to use things that you can't change, is going to use things that you can change, and he's going to come at you from all angles. Things that you like, things that you dislike. Yes. So this is how the enemy comes at you. We think that we will see him coming with a treated fork. But he look like some good money. We are not feeling. <laughs> a, a pretty girl. <laughs> cute boy. Only for cute boy about them days. Eh? Um, I, I, I love so many things. I love equipment. Um, some equipment that should not be mine. 
<laughs> but wherever the enemy may, may come from, I don't want to be sick when I comes with sickness. And you know, nobody wants to be sick, don't. I, nobody wants to be broke. Sometimes I get a relief and you say, yes, things not too bad again. May I, let me see what I do you now. And then it just makes a bop. And you begin to wonder, but all of these and more are the devices of the devil. And today, we are not going to allow him to get an advantage over us. Anybody hear that? We cannot allow him to get an advantage over us. So we are going to ensure that we are sober, sensible, vigilant. We are aware of what's happening so that we will be able to outmaneuver his tactics just like Jesus will be able to overcome the plans and the plots of the enemy. Amen? We overcome all these through Jesus. I don't know the praise team help me how oh, it is Jesus. With how oh, it is Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, it is Jesus. Knowing it's Jesus. Knowing it's Jesus. It is Jesus. It is Jesus. In my soul. Praise unto the Lord. Have you ever found yourself in a situation, an attack of the enemy that you don't feel like you can get out of? You are able to get out of it by the power of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Today, if there is somebody in the need of prayer, you are not saved. If you may be sick, if you are encountering some attacks from the enemy that you do not feel like you can make it through. I'm inviting you to this altar. Hallelujah. Come out to this altar because the Lord, he cares for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Do not be afraid. This is a place of renewal. It's a place of refuge. A place where the Lord helps you. It's a place of power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to sing a chorus. Oh, yes, he cares. I don't know if you know that. 
Yes, he cares. I know he cares. And you can just walk out to this altar. Feel free. It is here for you. Oh, oh yes. He cares. I know he cares. My, my grief. Though the ways are weary and all life's dreary, I know my Jesus cares. Let's sing it again. Oh, yes, he cares. Oh, yes. with my grief though the ways are weary and all life's dreary I know my Savior anybody feel like nobody ever cared for you yet God cares for you oh, oh, oh yes He's touched my God is touched with my grief. Though the ways are weary, though the ways are weary, and all life's dreary, I know my Sometimes we think God is not there and we think that he doesn't care. But that's just another technique of the enemy. He cares. Whatever you're going through, whatever your thoughts are, whatever your circumstances may be, the, the, your whole life seems long and dreary and you're getting weary. Weary, the Lord, He cares. Can I do it just one last time, please? Oh, yes, He cares. Oh, yes, He cares. I know He cares. My God is touched with my grief. I don't know who feels like they are left all by themselves, but my Savior cares. Jesus cares. I don't know who it is. The Lord is saying to somebody specifically today that wherever you are, whatever point you are in your life, it doesn't matter if it's a point where all hell seems to be breaking loose. Everything seems to be falling apart. He's saying, I am meeting you there. Yes. I care. You know why you're standing? He's holding you up. He's bearing you up. Amen. Whoever you may be, hallelujah. He knows and he cares. Hallelujah. 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 It doesn't matter how painful that hurt is within you now. 
the Lord he cares and the Lord is bearing you up they think it cannot be dealt with but the Lord is saying whatever the outcome he's sorting it out he's sorting it out because he cares hallelujah 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 he cares we give God thanks for a word from him as thus saith the Lord God he cares hallelujah today let us pray could the church just stretch your hands to these at the altar and if you have a special need for yourself currently just lift it up before the Lord doesn't matter how unfixable it seems. The Lord is able to take care of it. Father, we come to you right now. Because you are the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. You are the one who cares for us abundantly. You are the one who looks beyond our faults. And you are able to see our needs. Today we are happy that you care. We are glad that you are touched with our griefs. We are glad today, God, that you understand our thought patterns and the things that we are going through right now. And for these who are standing at the altar, you know specifically what they seek. Young men seeking strength and power and longevity and success. Oh God, young women seeking strength and uh, sustenance and security. Father, elders seeking healing and deliverance. Unsaved seeking salvation. Christians seeking comfort and peace. We place them before you right now. We place them before you right now. That those seeking acceptance, Lord God, they will know that you accept them. And that you'll raise up the right crowd. Lord God, to show that they are appreciated. Father, I pray dear God for those who are not saved, that you will save them right now. And you let it be, God, that they'll begin to call on your name. It is your Holy Spirit that causes transformation. It is your Holy Spirit that convicts the heart to saying yes to you. Father, I pray that you'll rest your hand upon these at the altar, you know the varying needs. As I call them out, you know even more than me. I pray to God that you let your Holy Spirit just flow over their lives and cause healing and deliverance and salvation, changing of situation, and a moving of your power, even now. We believe you that you care, and we believe you that you are turning things around. We lift up a standard against every attack of the enemy right now. Every signal of doubt, we plead the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, against it. Every signal of fear will lift up a standard against it now. And we declare that your people will walk in victory, walk in salvation, walk overcoming, walk in power, walk in might. As you, Jesus, walk with them. You are their savior and their deliverer and the one who sets them free. Today we thank you that your word have come forth. And I pray to God that whosoever it, it has come to, that you will minister continuously to them and cause them deliverance right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Before you go to your seats, there's somebody here who is not saved and you want to say as of today, I want to make that commitment to the Lord. I want to accept him as my savior. You can indicate by the raising of your hand. It is the most powerful decision that can be made. It is the most profound thing to accept. 
the salvation that Jesus died on the cross so that we can receive. Yes. I started very young and I'm still young and he's keeping me. If there's somebody who wants to say yes, you can indicate by the raising of your hand. Hallelujah. If there's somebody who wants to make a new commitment to the Lord, you can indicate by the raising of your hand today. Hallelujah. The Lord, he's here for you. And even as a, we're about to send it back to your seat, just know that the Lord, he wants to save you and deliver you from the clutches and the crutches of the enemy. And he wants to deliver you. Just believe him. Hallelujah. You may return to your seats at this time. Hallelujah. Today, the Lord, he cares for us. Amen? Amen. Today we, I just want you to stay with me. Don't, don't leave until we are done. Amen? Yes. Today there is a child to be dedicated. And it's always an honor for me to carry out this ceremony of child dedication. Amen, everybody? The, before, before you start, and take a microphone, please. The psalmist says, from the day I was born, I have been in your care. And from the time of my birth, you have been my God. Anybody hear that? So from the child is a little tiny tot. The Lord has that child at heart. So at this time, I'm going to invite the parents and children, godparents, if there be, to come and stand here with me at the altar. When, when mothers of Salem. When mothers of Salem, their children brought to Jesus the stern disciples, drove them back and made them depart. But Jesus saw them here, they fed them truly smart and kind. He said, To suffer the little children to come unto me. Suffer the little children to come unto me. Suffer the little children to come unto me. Hallelujah. Now this song is saying, allow the little children. Not make them suffer now. But allow the little children to come to me. Now, as Kelly Lee Sterling and Kimani Williams have brought to us today Kashmir Kimari Williams uh, to be dedicated. We acknowledge that child dedication boldly, boldly declares three foundational truths. One, that this young child is precious to God and his life is sacred 
because he was created in the image of God to have the capacity to personally relate to God. Yes, believe it or not. And two, in spite of the innocent beauty of this little child, we recognize that in due time, he will need to acknowledge the Lord as his Savior. He needs Christ, just like everybody else. Amen? He need to be redeemed, for they are like all of us and are utterly helpless to merit salvation. Three, dedication declares that Jesus is the rescuer. And as Jesus invited the little children to come, he did this because he knew better than anyone else did that they needed him too. Acts 4.12 says, There is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. So we're going to look into the word that comes from Deuteronomy. It says in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 6 to 7, And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I am giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are on the road, when you are going to bed and when you are getting up. This commandment of God that we should diligently rear our children in our most holy faith is in obedience to God. So in obedience to this command, these parents, I believe, bring little Kashmir to be dedicated. Now the precedent of this baby dedication is seen as much in the parents dedicating themselves as much as the child being dedicated. Because you soon see what I mean. Because I will be asking you some things and charging you with some things. And if you are not dedicated to God, it's almost impossible for you to do the same. Amen? Hallelujah. So we see that it is very important to know that even Joseph and Mary brought Jesus to be dedicated as they brought him to the temple on the eighth day. Samuel was brought to the temple and given back to God uh, when he was just a little boy by his mother, Hannah. And so we see that this is a very important thing as the parents had to be committed. How hard it is, especially as it was in the case of Anna, to give up his, her son. At that time, it was her first son, and she committed him to the Lord. So we see here that in Ephesians 6, we get more guidance as to this. It says, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. This ceremony is meaningless unless the parents themselves dedicate their child to God. Now, from that scripture, it says, do not provoke your child to anger. It indicates building up the child's positive self-image. So, yes, you have to talk to the child and sometimes take away something from them to ensure that you instill discipline and good manners and good behavior. However, ensure that whatever you do builds the child positive self-image. Can't say, you're drunk or like your father. Mother then loves to them something there. You say, you're still like your mother. Nothing boy you. No, we have to do things that will lift them up and build them. Amen? And these children these days are so sensitive. You have to know what you say and how you say it. Amen? Yes. And, um, it says, bring them up. This word includes nourish and nurture. So ensure that he gets enough nourishment. So feed him well. Amen? Ensure that he gets good nurture. The babies love a lot of comfort. Yes, yeah, some skin time we hear the nurses talking about, whether with the father or the mother, ensure that you are there. A lot of children who become viral children, they get everything they want. But they are the worst at school. They do not know how to behave themselves. Why? Because the nurture was missing. Amen? Discipline. This word includes instruction and spiritual guidance and training. A lot of the discipline that a child will get will come from a spiritual source. Spiritual guidance 
and training. Ensure that the child is brought up well. When a child don't behave well, what we say out there? They have no home training. Make sure that there's good home training. Get that? No matter how young you be, make sure there's good home training. Yes, I, I spoke earlier how my father walked me up. Maybe we don't do that so much these days because I don't like that myself. Um, but we ha have to find a way to give good home training. Amen, everybody? And then instruction. This word speaks about warnings and encouragement. So warn him if, him, if he will. Because sometimes there are some things I have said, be careful and explain it properly. T if you tell them don't do one thing, tell them what to do to replace that thing that you're saying not to do. Warn and be serious. You can't say, the child, the child just said this, and it not sound good enough. He, 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 he. And you laugh. No, no matter how cute him be, can't laugh about if him say wrong or do wrong. Discipline. Amen. And to the God parents, it is very important that you know the rule. If anything should happen, who is in charge? Yes. And just to drop off money and carry out the ice cream. Serious guidance, serious training. Amen comes from your hand also and responsibility. And if you say, Daddy, I do something where you're not supposed to, nah, work out good for the little man. You say, no, man, you have to do it this way instead. If you say, Mommy, now nah, go on well with the teeter, you say, X, Y, and you help. Amen? Yes. So this is, this is it. So I'm coming down. Um, the covenant of the parents, and if it be your intention to present your child to the Lord and to pledge yourself to bring your child up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord, you will answer to these questions. Um, we will. Do you hear this day? Recognize, well, we do. Do you um, hear this day? Recognize your child as a gift of God and give heartfelt thanks for God's blessings? You hear this day, dedicate your child to the Lord who gave him to you? Do you hear this day pledged as parents that you will bring up your child in the discipline and instruction of the Lord? You hear what I'm saying now? Yes. Do you hear this day promise to give your child every possible benefit of home, of education, and of the church? Remember that part that says, of the church. Amen. It's very beneficial. Do you hear this day ask God's blessing upon your child's life to guide, guard, and direct your child through all his years? Amen. And the Lord, he really wants to have his hand in the life of your child. Could the congregation stand with me at this time? And you will answer, we will, if you're in agreement. Will you, members of this congregation, be faithful to your calling as members of the body of Christ so that this child and all other children in your midst may grow up in the knowledge and the love of God? Amen. Amen. Could we remain standing? I'm going to ask Minister Shania to take the baby, and she's going to pray the prayer of dedication at this time. Could we bow our heads and close our eyes at this time? Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this gift, Ashmere. Lord God, we understand that this time is a serious time. But Lord, we also understand that you are a God who is able to protect this child. Lord, as his parents brought him here to dedicate him to you, Father, I pray, Lord God, that your presence will dwell wherever he lies. I pray, Father, that there will be no form of harm nor danger that will come about him. But, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, everything that is done towards him will be a blessing. Lord God, we come against the family accursed. We come against, Lord God, everything that is from the root, Lord, 
Lord God, of, ancest of the ancestors, Lord God. We come against those uh, negative things, uh, Lord God. Everything that should rise up against him, uh, Lord God, that is not of you. We come against them under the authority of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and right now, Father, as you have given us the authority, Lord God, we declare a spirit of excellence upon this child. Right now, Lord God, we declare a spirit of newness upon this child. Lord God, I pray that, Lord, his parents, Lord, will not go home the same. But, Lord God, they will start to live up, Lord God, to the responsibilities that you have set on them today. I pray, Father, that even the God parents, Lord God, will be an example to this child. Not an example that will cause him to fall in the wrong zone. But, Lord God, an example that will cause the world to see a great child. That will cause the world to experience, Lord God, the excellence that you have placed upon him. We thank you, Lord God, for the obedience of the parents. We thank you, Lord God, that this child will not die, but this child will grow up in your favor, in your will, and in your way. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. I thank you for this very day, Lord God. I thank you for what you are about to pour into this child. And I thank you for what you are about to do to this family just for being obedient and dedicating this child to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Could the people of God just show the praise unto the Lord? Amen. Could they show the hallelujah unto the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord is awesome. And it's, it's a good thing that you have done to take the child to be dedicated to the Lord. And we trust that as this, you have done this, that you also will be dedicated to the Lord. And that we will see you again. Amen? And that you'll be saying like what we are saying now. Yes? And uh, we will be able to, to bless you. Now, we will present you with a certificate. Um, we don't have it now, but as soon as we get it, by the end of the week, you will be able to get this certificate. And do not lose it because oftentimes these are some of the things that are used to um, sort out things concerning um, identification and origin. So we'll, we'll give that certificate to you. And God bless you. And good to have you. Blessings. Blessings. Amen, everybody. The Lord is awesome. Amen. Amen. And he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. And one of the reasons why I look forward to first Sundays is because there might be a baby to be dedicated. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's an honor for me. Now, um, today we have for the first time with us, um, brother and sister Evelyn. Could they stand? Could you stand? C come, come here for a little bit. I won't give them too much trouble. <laughs> but we started celebrating um, from last year, and the wedding was on the 11th of, of January. Yes, my anniversary was the 10th and the wedding was the 11th. And uh, we give God thanks. We usually have Brother Andre, don't? Yes. And, and every now and again, Sister Rachel used to visit with us. But today we have Mr. and Mrs. Evelyn. Could you put your hands together? When I was a little boy, the church people used to love the trouble and they used to love to see a kiss. But I'm not going to give that trouble. Amen? I'm not going to give that trouble. <laughs> Earlier, I was watching them. Um, at first, you know, she sit down at the front and Brother Andre sit down at the back of me and say, sit down behind her. I say, but the brother man not just go sit down and say, and I wife. And then when they were sitting over there and 
at the welcome, they say, want to welcome them. They were like, like them shy. But when illegal here, you didn't know? When illegal. All right? When illegal. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. And this is an institution of the Lord. Marriage is honorable. And the bed is on the file. And I can't wait to see some more marriages. Amen. God bless you. You can return to your seat. All right? And they can't say, I didn't give them any trouble. I didn't give them any trouble. Also, I want to just inform the church that, well, I was complaining about a piece of equipment that we had that was going down, and I was so, so um, you know, nervous at times because it could just stop any time. But on, the, on December, was it December 30th? We didn't go at all. It was December 30th, we went to Kingston, and we were able to purchase a brand new mixing console. Amen? And we give God thanks. Could you put your hands together for the Lord? Amen. And we are still dealing with a little bit of the learning curve. Brother Ryan, the brains man right here, almost mastering it, but still working over the learning curve. I'm, I'm jack of all trades, but don't get no time to study this one yet. <laughs> all right, so um, the sound is coming up and it's getting better and better. And we give God thanks. We are going to be looking forward to getting some microphones and nice keys, right? And uh, Roger, Roger just by the bass, but I don't think he like it. Our next bass. <laughs> but we look to God keep, uh, keeping uh, his blessings flowing. Amen? Amen, Amen everybody? Amen. Amen. We give God thanks for this. Um, Oh, this TV, you saw it. You've been seeing it from last year. It was also purchased and given to the church. Um, I don't want to, I, I didn't want to announce that one because it feels funny. I me mean, buy it. So me never want to tell nobody, make it stay. You understand? Yes. Me never want everybody to know. <laughs> But God is good that we can have uh, some things and we'll soon put it in a better place that it will be safer from being hit up and damaged and so on. So we give God thanks. He's been blessing us. Amen, everybody. He's been blessing us. And uh, I, I remember um, when I just came here and I did not know what I was going to do because there were some bills high like this. But the Lord was able to help us to bring them down to. Yes, we pay off those first bills, right? Yes, and God is still helping us. And I did not take up any so-called seed offering. I did not strain nobody. Anybody hear that? But I want to give God thanks for those who gave. Amen? And we'll still be giving. Just let us uh, endeavor to continue to support the work of the ministry, whether by going out there to evangelize, by giving monetary-wise, or giving of ourselves, our service, and volunteering in the various areas that are necessary. I think I, I've spoken a lot, so um, I just want to pray concerning that mixing console. So I'm going to ask you to stand, and then after that we'll have the announcements after we pray. I want Brother Rhyme to go down there and him and Brother Green and Brother Junior and Brother Ryando just raise your hand on this mixer. And you might think it's just a mixer but you wouldn't know. One day when I'm talking to you off the air I tell you. 
some stories. Amen? Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Father, we praise you. Father, we lift you because there is none like you. All good gifts and all perfect gifts, they come from you. And so we thank you. God, as you have given us, God, the ability to purchase this as a gift, I pray to God that you let your hand be rested upon it. Let your presence, Lord God, saturate it. I know it's an inanimate piece of equipment, but it is used, God, to bring life to your service and to enable us to do more powerful things and to reach farther and wider. I pray, Father, that as we use it, that our knowledge will increase concerning it and that the sound will become more and more pleasant in the name of Jesus. And God that as you blessed us with that, that you let it be dedicated to your service and to your service only. Lord God, that every foul play and anything that the enemy might plan to happen, Lord God, as it concerns this piece of equipment, that it will be thwarted and that it will be nullified in the name of Jesus. We dedicate today this mixer to your service in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Blessed Holy Ghost. We also, God, I dedicate this television here, Lord God, to your service. Oh God, as it has been given, Lord God, to you and to your uh, kingdom. I pray, dear Father, that the functions will be towards you. And that God, as it is used, that your people will be blessed and edified. We ask again this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Could you put your hands together for the Lord? Could we shout, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. You may be seated at this time when our secretary will come with today's announcements. Shall we worship the Lord? Praise the Lord. Service was a blessing. Amen. Service was a blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please listen to these announcements. Um, next week, Sunday, which is the 11th of February, will be for pastor's appreciation celebration service. Members, please remember your contributions. Amen? Please also remember the National Bible Quiz. So the persons who are participating, hope you are studying and preparing yourselves to become champions. Amen? Amen? Watson's Hill PCG, that's Pastor Kayan's church, will be having their harvest Thanksgiving service on the 18th of February at 5 p.m. Hallelujah. The Pennantwood PCG men's department will be having a crusade from the 21st of February to the 25th. All members are invited. More information on this next week, Sunday. So, you know, we have to build the kingdom of God and we have to go out and tell the people what God has been doing for us and is about to do. So, we have to go out on the road and, you know, for Jesus. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Also, Sister Shanoya would like to speak to all the board members for about five minutes, excluding Reverend Jackson and Sister Jackson. Hallelujah. The weekly activities continues Tuesday night ladies and men's service. Wednesday fasting, Wednesday night Bible studies and prayer meeting. Thursday, we'll be having prayer practice Thursday evening at 7. Friday night, youth night. So come out, support, united we stand, divided we fall. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone, please stand. Hallelujah. Raise your right hands. Praise Jesus.
let the peace of the Lord go with you. See you all next week. Amen.